I can't get out of my head now. It oh, is. What? Can I say that honestly, I, I have certain mark out moments and I'm like, I'm holding the ropes for Shelton Benjamin. That's very cool. <laughs> I got to fangirl, like, honestly, here at For the Love of Wrestling so many times. Uh, first of all, how are you enjoying For the Love of Wrestling in Manchester? Has everyone been treating you well? Everyone here has been great. This has been absolutely a lot of fun. It's actually a day off. It's always fun for me to get out and interact with the fans and have a good time. And, yeah, this is great. You know, honestly, it's great for us because you came all the way to see us in the UK. And obviously, you know, there's so many great loyal wrestling fans in the UK. But I have to go off of what Brooker just said. Your theme is a banger. Is it? It's a banger. All right. It's a banger. It's a banger. I'm, I'm going to stop. That's exactly it. what I said. I know. Like. I was waiting for Aaron, who's Scottish, to just be horrified <laughs> at my British accent. What's wrong with a banger? A, ba a banger. <laughs> He's trying to do an American accent. Your theme song is one of the most fun, and you know, it's, it's one of those ones that comes on, and it's immediately you go, yeah, Shelton's coming out. Tell us about your theme, how it was given to you, and like how it came about. Uh, well, first WWE gave me like this weird, generic, screechy sound when I, when I very first started. And uh, after I, of course, went through Team Angle and World's yep. Greatest Tag Team, so they decided that, uh, okay, we're gonna give them a singles push, and there really wasn't a whole lot of discussion. It's almost like they already had it pre-packaged, and they, like, had me listen to it. And I, I'll be honest, the first time I heard it, I was like, eh? <laughs> oh, you didn't love it at first. I, I, I did not oh. like it at first. Like, you know, they asked my input on it, so there's a lot of, like, rock and metal and all those other things in it. And, uh, but yeah, when I, when I first heard it, 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 it didn't, quite resonate with me. Right. But as some things do, it, it grew on me, and especially when it grows on the fans and all of a sudden I got people in the street going, ain't no stopping me now, every time. So I'm like, okay, we're on to something. Yeah, yeah. So I, I appreciate it. That's why uh, in my last run, that entire run, I made it very clear that I hate my music <laughs> and I want my old theme back. And uh, they never, they never uh, conceded it, but I never stop telling them I hate this music wow. and I want my old theme back. I personally love it. It's one of my favorites. But if you could have a theme song that was, you know, it's obviously copyrights are an issue. If you could have a theme song that was copywritten by maybe a band of a favorite of yours, what would you have? Ooh. I'm giving you the heavy questions immediately. I know. Yeah, I'm coming in hot. Oh, wow. Uh, there's, there's too many in <laughs> So here's the thing, I can't think of any rock songs right, right now, but I do know I used to want to steal Taz's music. His is so good, the, the, the heartbeat, right? With the heartbeat and yeah, yeah and, and the sirens. Uh, I, used to have, I used to own a big white Hummer and I tricked it out, had these big speakers. So if you were in Minneapolis around 2006, 2007 and a white Hummer drove past you blasting Taz's music, 1,000% me. That was you. That was totally That was 100% you. Do you have any favorite wrestling themes? Because we were talking to Trish Stratus about this, and she mentioned something that was very cool. She mentioned, like, Stone Cold's theme was that breaking glass. So, like, right. if you're a fan, and I've literally been at shows where I've heard that happen, you know immediately everyone just completely, you know, the whole crowd lifts up. Do you have any favorite themes that stick out to you? I know we just heard The Brood earlier. That's my personal favorite. Uh, well, I will tell you what. The Brood was probably the greatest interest music I've ever heard. Like, I, I agree. I can't think of any song better than, than, than the Brood song. Oh. And yes, I would steal that too in a heartbeat. Yeah. Uh, my favorite, I would actually say was probably Undertaker's original Graveyard Symphony. Uh, most of you won't notice, but I was a collegiate wrestler and they actually let us come out the theme music when I was in college. And yeah, I used The Undertaker's Graveyard Symphony my senior year in college. Wow. <laughs> Again, that's a Comic-Con exclusive, Chris Brooker. That's for you. <laughs> now, as far as themes go, I mean, obviously Undertaker, we love Undertaker, but did, were you a phenom Undertaker fan or were, did you prefer the American badass version? Oh, no. I'm, I'm a dead man fan. Yeah. Phenom all the way. Yeah. Yeah, give me the, give me the classics. <laughs> yes. We actually have an Undertaker uh, UK cosplayer that's around here. He is spot on, one of the best. Shout out to uh, Taker UK. Now I have to ask you if I can get into um, fangirling and fanboying, if you will. Who were your inspirations in wrestling? We're talking Undertaker, we mentioned Stone Cold Steve Austin, but who really resonated with you as a fan before you got into wrestling? Uh, well, 
So I grew up in the in the, the American South, so I saw a lot of Crockett stuff. I didn't see a lot of WWE. So for me, you know, Hulk, Hulk Hogan was the other guy. Ric Flair was the man. Yeah. In my world, Ric Flair is and was the greatest world champ ever. Um, so I grew up watching a lot of Ric Flair, obviously the Horseman. Uh, the Rock and Roll Express, is a, that duo made me fall in love with wrestling. Uh, because I was tuning in to see them. I didn't care about anything. I was tuning in to see the Rock and Roll Express. Yeah. And from there, guys like Magnum TA, Dusty Rose, Nikita Koloff, uh, and I just found out later the Samoan SWAT team, the Steiners, yep. uh, the Skyscrapers, uh, Barry Windham. Uh, so all, all, all of those, you know, Crockett area guys. So, and then I did go through a phase where I was a huge Ultimate Warrior fan. Yay. Um, but that didn't last. But uh, also, but as a kid, as an adult, the one of the guys that I've only met him once. I want to. I I really wish I could have gotten a chance to work with him before he retires, uh, because he is literally my biggest inspiration in pro wrestling, and that's Sting. Oh. Like I've been a Sting fan for as long as I can remember. And if you watch some of my earlier work, I am stealing his whole offense. <laughs> like the entire, the splash, the, the chopping and the kick, like that is all Sting. I'm literally stealing his offense. I'm sure that he's honored by that though, because I mean, you are so technically gifted. You're one of those wrestlers I feel like if you watch and you're a fan, like, and I'm not a wrestler, so I don't want to get into the physicality of it, but you, you, you're, it, you make it look so effortless. You make it look so clean and fluid, you really do. But what have been, what have been your uh, interactions with Sting when you met him? What was it like? It, it, honestly, it was really short because it was actually at an event like this. He was signing in a private area and I was on the floor and I just told the promoter, like, I've never met Sting. Wow. And I want to, I, ju I just like to meet him before I, you know, while, while I have the chance. And uh, yeah, he just walked me right over. I, I met him, shook his hand. Uh, I think he made, made some sort of small joke or whatever, but it was very short. Yeah. Uh, it was definitely not... Uh, as long as I would have hoped, but I mean, we were all busy, so I understand, but, but yeah, for me, yeah, I, I met my idol, I met Sting, so, That's so cool. I, I was happy. Yeah, and he's a super, super nice guy. What we're gonna have to do is book you and Sting on the next For the Love of Wrestling and get a little interaction going. We're gonna have to set that up. I'll, I'll talk to management, see what uh, we can do. Uh, oh, only if I can paint my face. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, oh yeah. Get the sting paint on. Well, I have to say, so you mentioned Team Angle. We have to talk about that because Kurt Angle was a favorite of mine. Kurt Angle fans in the crowd? Of course. Uh, what was it like to be a part of Team Angle and to work under the learning tree, under the tutelage of Kurt Angle? So, uh, that was probably one of the best times of my career. I'd, I'd just gotten in. We got thrown right into the deep end of the pool. Yeah. And honestly, working with Kurt was cool because Kurt was only a couple years older than us as far as like his time in the business. Yeah. So in a lot of ways, we were learning from each other. Kurt, Kurt clearly was the, uh, the, cap, the team captain, but we, he, we really did treat each other as teammates. Like he, he learned stuff from us, we learned stuff from him, but you know, obviously he had the bigger name, so he was, he was, a, he was a big name on the marquee. Yeah. But I feel like Team Mango, myself, Charlie, and Kurt, like, we actually worked together to push each other and form the great, long, life, life long lasting friendship uh, between it. Because again, Kurt, as a leader, you know, he treated us with, with such respect. I mean, we were, we were basically like his little brothers. So it was one of the best times of my career. Gosh, and one of the best ever, Kurt Angle, my goodness. He's on everyone's Mount Rushmore, deservedly so. Uh -huh. Now, if we talk about wrestlers that are so talented, we have so many amazing uh, people that are here, some stars from Monopoly events. For the love of wrestling, we've got X-Pac, we've got Scott Steiner, Trish, Lita, Al Snow. Who were you excited to see that was added to this show that you wanted to either reunite with or meet for the first time? Um, that's kind of hard to say because, th to be honest, like a, a lot of the guys that are here, I I I've known them for, you know, decades. So it's like I'm 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 seeing my family members again. Anytime I can hang out with my big goose Rikishi, that's a good time. Uh, anytime I can hang out, like Riddle, Riddle, that guy keeps me laughing. I, I you so know funny. I I love I love him. Um, so it's hard to say any one particular person that I'm. Uh, 
that I was excited to see. But I, but I will because I just told them this. I, I was happy to see X-Pac, and, and I'll tell you why. When I first got into the business before, this is when I just signed. I hadn't gotten in a ring, hadn't taken a bump, knew nothing, knew nobody. And we went to, I hung out with X-Pac after SummerSlam 99. That was my first introduction to the wrestling business. And myself and Brock and, you know, a bunch of us, we, you know, went up hanging out. And X-Pac, who in our eyes, you know, D DX was, was hot. It was, you know, oh, yeah. it was a shit. You know, that they was, were just that was, cool, right? They, they were, were just so really cool. cool. So, you know, he was hanging out with us, and I didn't get the superstar treatment. I didn't get the superstar per persona. Yeah. And, you know, having just stepped foot in the door, he treated me and everyone with such respect. And, like, there was, there was no hierarchy. It, it, it just felt like I was hanging out with a really nice guy. Yeah. He, was, he was saying please and thank yous and sirs to us. And I'm thinking, again, I never expected that from someone, much less a marquee guy who's in DX and I'm just a guy who stepped in the door. So, and I, and I just, I told him today, because of how he treated me, it kind of set the tone of how I want to model myself and how I want to treat people going through my career. So I, I thank him for that because, like I said, it, it's, well, if nothing else, let's be decent people to each yeah. other. It doesn't matter where you are in life. Superstar, yeah. guy driving a bus, we're all the same and treat each other with love and respect. Yeah, very well said. Yes, round of applause for that. And that's what we love about Sean Waltman. We did an evening with him on uh, Friday and he was just amazing. No pretension there, just a good guy. Uh, quick question for me before we get to you guys, the fans, so get your questions ready. So obviously your amazing career, I'm a big fan of yours. So when you were starting though, you mentioned Brock Lesnar. What was it like getting up in the ranks? Who, who were your, your bros coming up in the ranks and like what was it like to get to WWE? Like what was the journey like for you to get to that, the biggest name in town? Uh, well, so obviously I started in OVW and everyone's familiar with the famous OVW class. That included myself, Brock, Cena, Orton, Batista. Yeah. Uh, but then there are guys, Eugene, Rob Conway, Victoria, Jazz, Red Dog, Nydia, uh, for a bit, uh, Big Show. Like, we had just an amazing class of people, and that was my, that was my running crew. Everyone showed up early, everyone stayed late, everyone wanted to help each other because we all knew WWE had three different options to pull talent from. Yeah. So we all made it a point to help everybody else be overqualified so that when they get called up, WWE be happy with what they got from OVW and they will keep coming back to that pool. Now, that being said, having four world champs, you know, and, you know, multiple time champs, I consider our class the greatest class of all time. And I, I hold that up to anyone's comparison, oh so. My gosh. It is for sure, and we had Al Snow in here. We were talking about how many superstars came out of Ohio Valley Wrestling, and that's why we're so glad that it's gained recognition on Netflix. If you haven't seen wrestlers about OVW on Netflix, it is incredible. But again, I have so many things to talk to you about, but I could fangirl all day long. <laughs> but here at Monopoly, we're by the fans, for the fans. Mr. Brooker, let's get some questions from these amazing folks. Well. We, oh, yes. It's almost tradition now. We have yeah. to start. Here we go. The, uh, the Romanian nightmare is here. The Romanian nightmare. <laughs> Thank you so much nightmare. for introducing me so many times. <laughs> I appreciate it. Hello, Shelton. Good How to see you. you. Uh, since m maybe most of us know that you hold both the Intercontinental and the United States Championship mm, in different occasions, I want to know from you uh, which one was the more meaningful which reign was more meaningful for me? Uh, oh, that's an easy question. My, my first Intercontinental Championship uh, that I won at Taboo Tuesday against Chris Jericho is easily the, the most special uh, of all my runs. Mainly because, uh, one, it was my first singles title ever. And two, when I originally got into WWE, I only thought, oh, well, maybe I can win a tag team championship. That was as far as I expected or was hoping to, uh, to any championship as far as winning. So once I won the Intercontinental Championship, I was officially overachieving my own personal goals going in. And, uh, so, and I had a pretty significant run that first time. So 
Easily my first IC title run is my favorite. Well done. Also, I love the shout out to Taboo Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Who remembers Taboo Tuesday? There we go. Remember Sunday Night Heat? Oh yeah, I was on that quite a few times. Yeah. <laughs> they, they would do it from like WWF New York. Remember Velocity? God, Jack I'm dating jacked. myself. Jacked. 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 Yes. You know what? I, I never did jacked. I did Velocity. And I, I remember I had, a, I had matches with Just Incredible and Re William Regal on oh. Velocity. Yeah. William Regal? William Dro Regal. Dropping some Who, serious names. I think he's British. He's from England. Uh, yeah. Regal. I heard, he, I heard he was this tough British guy, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what he's up to. His I'm, son is a wrestler now. Have you met him? His son is a wrestler. Not he's only, so great. Not only have I met him, I actually wrestled him uh, a couple months oh, ago. On, um, How was that? Charlie Superstars. Dimmer. He's great. Uh, main event. That's main it. Event. Yes. Yeah. If I may. If, watch main event on the network because there's a lot of hidden little gems in there like that one. Did you wrestle Zach Gibson on that one? Um, oh, grizzled young veteran uh, Zach what Gibson. What was his name? Uh, Rip Fowler from NXT. I think it was you and him. It was a night where in your hometown you had a match and they gave you a big moment afterwards. Oh, yeah, big yeah, yeah. Big Liverpool yeah. lad. Yeah. Yes, He's yes. one of ours. Yes. yes and, and he was phenomenal. I, I told him that night, like, I work with these guys any day of the week. But uh, yeah, I, I worked uh, him, Charlie Dempsey, uh, some of the other newer guys like Damian Kemp. Yep. So, yeah, and yeah, Dempsey is, he's, he's great. Like he's, he's so gonna good. be so good. I didn't know he was um, at Progress Wrestling. Hello, we're in the Progress Wrestling ring. By the way, when are you coming to Progress Wrestling, bro? Super strong style, Progress Wrestling? Hey, when, when am I coming to Progress book Wrestling? Book it, book it, <laughs> legit. Honestly, we have some of the best, obviously we're the best in the UK, no joke. Best Brit talent, honestly. But Charlie Dempsey was there and I did not know he was William Regal's son. And I go, oh, it makes sense. He sort of bowed to me when I met him. And I go, there you go. That's very Regal-esque. And he's a lovely guy as well, isn't he? What a good <laughs> yes. kid. Yeah. Fantastic. For uh, sure. Yeah, let's get to the fans. Hello, how are you? Here we go. What's your name, sir? Uh, I'm Richard. Nice to see you, Val Shelton. Um, I've been training to be a wrestler for just around a year now. I'm thinking back to that one kind of like pivotal moment in my mind, what made me decide, right, I'm going to do this. What was that moment for you? For me, I was just on the beach at like two in the morning taking a break from a night out. What was it for you? Uh, well, I was, I've been a lifelong wrestling fan since I was a kid. And I would say around high school, I started thinking to myself, you know what? I think I can do this better than some of the guys on here. And that's when pretty much I made up my mind that I wanted to try to become a professional wrestler. Uh, I was doing amateur wrestling. I told my high school coach about it, and my high school coach actually went to college with Gorilla Monsoon. And so his plan was once we were done with college, he would contact Gorilla Monsoon. Unfortunately, Gorilla passed away, so that didn't happen. But as luck would have it, I ended up going to Minnesota, and the connections there as far as uh, Gerald Briscoe and my coach at the time, Jay Robinson, they were friends. So they kind of facilitated m introducing me and Lesnar to WWE. But uh, yeah, I decided when I was in high school, yeah, I'm, go I'm going to give this a go. And I think I did pretty good. <laughs> I think you did very well. I think it worked out pretty well for him. What do you think, Manchester? Yeah. The rest is history. Safe to Got say. Got a question right over uh, there. May, you... may I just of indulge course. myself briefly? This is what happens when I get power. <laughs> I shouldn't have it. To go back to Taboo Tuesday, is it true that you did not know, or were there no plans for you to become champion that night until you were chosen? Was it very much a, we'll do it? Did you know it was happening until it happened? I, and, and I say this over and over, I'm not working, I'm not exaggerating, I want to make it very clear that I'm not saying this so that the, sto the story sounds more fantastic. I had no clue I was going to work that night. I 1,000% thought Batista was going to win the vote and I would have a night off. <laughs> to the point, and I, I like to point this out, if you go back and watch the tape, when they announced my name, my reaction is delayed because I really wasn't listening. I thought they were going to say Batista. <laughs> so when it took me a second to go, oh. And then I was like, oh, oh shit, I got to wrestle. So that's when I started trying to myself up but I was I was legit shocked 
Uh, me and Jericho did not plan a match. Jericho was the only guy whose match was, he had 15 potential opponents and he had no clue who he was gonna wrestle. He tried to find out, they wouldn't tell him anything. Every other match on that card was some sort of stipulation. The guys knew who they were gonna wrestle, but they didn't know which gimmick was gonna be incorporated as far as table lines and chairs or whatever. Jericho had no clue. There's 15 guys, you're gonna wrestle one of them. Okay, they, he didn't know the finish. Jericho, when he went, Jericho went to the ring and then I came to the ring. I knew nothing. We locked up one time, Jericho said, what's your finish? I said, T-bone. And for the rest of that match, I just listened to Jericho. And I didn't know I was winning until Jericho said, catch me in your finish. And then he didn't kick out. Wow. No clue. That match was 100% made up on the fly. We didn't pre-plan anything. There was no rehearsals. There's none of the stuff that people, oh, they practice all this. No. We literally went out there, called the entire match on the fly, and... Vince called the finish during the match. So everything was on the fly. We were 1,000% unaware of what was going to happen that night. That is amazing. Amazing. Now I have to watch the match back knowing that information. Serious question from me to you. How phenomenal is Chris Jericho? What a pro, right? Chris, first of all, the fact that he's still doing it still at a high level uh, in, in AEW, like, that, I mean, you, you could say he, he should be on a Mount Rushmore. 100%, yeah. Just long, longevity alone. And, I mean, what he's done, he's made, he's made so many careers, uh, you know, won so many titles, been so influential in and out of, in and out of wrestling. Yeah. So, I mean, the guy's phenomenal. Yeah. And some of the cool, a lot of the cool spots that I did, like Money in the Bank and all those things, I credit Chris Jericho and Edge for a lot of my cool spots because, one, I would not have, uh, I wouldn't have volunteered Edge's body to take a T-bone off the top rope, off the top of the ladder. That was Edge's idea, and Jericho with the ladder run, that was his idea. They just would treat me like a video game, and like, can you do it? And I was like, yeah, I can do that. Can you do that? Yeah, I can do that. Oh my God. Now. That same stuff that I was doing that they were praising me for, I used to do at home when I was a kid and my mom would whip my... <laughs> you didn't follow that do not try this at home advice, did you? No, no, oh, no, no, Shelty no, 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 no. B, come on. We had a question I right tried, over here. I tried it at home so you don't have to. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do, right? Hello. Hello. Hello, so what's your name? My name's Stephen, hello Shelton. How are you doing? One of my favorite matches was the match between you and Shawn Michaels in the Gold Rush tournament. Right. Can you tell me what was going through your mind with that famous spot at the end into the sweet chin music? You mean when I was leapfrogging yeah. and Mr. Springboard? Yeah. I can tell you exactly what was going on in my mind. Not in the face, not in the face. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> That's another Comic-Con exclusive there for you, Brooker. Great question, thank you. Here Hello. we go. Uh, what's your name, my friend? My name's Erickson. Nice to meet you, Shelton. How you doing, man? Um, I'm going to ask you, bro. You know when you perform high-flying movements, jumping off ladders 30 feet, how were you able to hone in your adrenaline and still perform the stunts you did? Because, mate, to me, I'll be crapping myself, to be honest with you. <laughs> That's insane. Uh, well, First of all, I don't hold any adrenaline. I, I let it, it's the adrenaline that has me doing this crazy stuff. Like, you know, <laughs> when I'm calm, I don't, you know, I'm a very calm, down to earth, keep my feet on the ground person, but you get in the ring and, you know, adrenaline gets in your head and you do crazy stuff. Um, but I trust the people I'm in the ring with. So with that in mind, uh, every, time, every time you see me dive, like, I wasn't worried about my safety because the people I work with, I trust implicitly. I, I give them my body and I know they'll take care of me just like I, I would do for them. Like that's, you know, that's cold. If there was, some, if, there, if I was in the ring with someone that I didn't feel safe with, especially diving, I just don't do it. Like, you know, 
Uh, I think a lot of guys got to learn just because you can do stuff doesn't mean you should do stuff. And also, a lot of the cr crazier moves I did, I wasn't doing this every night. You know what I mean? Like, you, if, you, if you watch a YouTube video of me and you'll see all these back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back nutty things that I do and people go, oh, that guy's crazy. Well, no, I'm not crazy. Everything I do is calculated and the risks are taken into effect. That's why I'm considering who's catching me. Where are they catching me? What am I jumping off? You know what I mean? Like, I take all of that stuff in and I, and I build in safety, safe, safety nets within the spot. For example, uh, when the second money in the bank, when I, when I ran across the lat, I ran up the ladder and then did a springboard and flipped on the guys. Well, most people don't realize the only reason I was able to do that was because Fit Finley was laying under the ladder, holding it down, making sure it didn't bounce when I run up. Same thing when I did the first ladder match. Yeah, it's cool that I was able to run up there, but what people don't get is that Christian was under the ladder, holding it against the other ladder so it didn't bounce. So again, I made it safer than it really was, but people are only gonna pay attention to me, not the safety apparatus, and, and so I, and I, I like to say that because guys try things all the time, not realizing, no, there's a, lot of, there's a lot more thought than just lean this ladder here and run up it because you can. I, I consider safety because this is my life, this is what I do for a living, and no matter what I do tonight, chances are I'm probably gonna have to get up tomorrow and do it again. So I, I make sure safety mechanisms are in place. Yeah. Beautiful. That was a great question, honestly. Speaking about adrenaline, I always wonder kind of what goes through a wrestler's mind as they're about to go through that curtain. Do you have any pre-match rituals or like how do you get yourself like hyped up to, to go out in front of crowds that, I mean, you've seen thousands upon thousands of people that, you know, that, that huge crowd in front of you. How do you prepare for that mentally, physically? I'll be honest, for me, uh, Usually, I, I have, whatever we're doing, I have it down in my head. I already, you know, aside from like a Jericho situation, but uh, for the most part, I try to not think about the match. I try to not think about the situation. I try to not think about any, I don't think about, oh, I hope I don't, I hope I don't mess up or anything. I don't, I don't even, I literally, I've gotten chewed out before by the office because I wasn't, nervous enough where it didn't seem like I was taking things seriously because I have such confidence in my ability that I'm just relaxed. So, yeah, I'm not even thinking about the match. I'm talking about I'm, I'm goofing off. I'm like maybe even playing a video game. And like everyone has their own method, but for me it just worked because when I go out to the ring, I'm confident in myself. And I know I'm not going to do anything I haven't done a million times. And yeah, I, once I'm out there, I start getting excited once I feel the crowd and their energy. But, but from before I walk up, I just try to relax and not even think about the match or the situation because I, I don't psych myself out. But once I'm out there, like I, I turn it on and I, I just go for it. I just have fun. And again, I trust my partners and I trust in my own training. So that's why it seems so easy. Yeah, that's the coolest answer ever. Like, I, I'm such an overthinker. I, I wish I was that cool. Shelty B is the coolest, let's be honest. Let's be honest. We have time for one final question from um, the audience, if Mr. If you would Brooker. like to turn to the pre this side. Oh. Uh, which one? Uh, we have a question over here. Hello, Shelton. My name hey. is Jonah. I'm just wondering, when you first arrived in, when well, you first made your debut on the Royal roster, you faced Triple H, and you actually got to beat him as well especially during a time when literally no one was beating him. So can you tell me what it was like beating him literally on your debut? That was, beating Triple H my first night on Raw was uh, unexpected. I was told the night before that I'd be working him and I remember <laughs> I was talking to Hurricane Helms and I said, yeah, I'm, I'm getting switched to Raw and tomorrow they're gonna have me Wrestle Triple H and I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do it. And Hurricane Helms, if you don't know it, is one of the wittiest persons on the planet. And he literally said to me, oh, you don't know what you're gonna do? Okay, stand up, let me show you. See, first he's gonna kick you in the stomach 
and then it's gonna take your head and put it between your legs, and then it's gonna grab one arm and then the other, and you just jump with it. And that's, that's pretty much what you're gonna do tomorrow. <laughs> so, so again, I didn't expect all the fanfare. Um, again, I was, I was so green, I, di I didn't even recognize that the show was built around building me up. Like, so when I got there and I had one pre-tape and two pre-tapes and, and I'm like, it was, it was an exciting day at work for me because that was the first time it seemed like all the focus was on me and what I had to do. So when I actually won, uh, it, was, it was like the heavens opened up. It was the, like I, I, I was getting calls and everything and praises and everything. And the, the, the next week at TV, Vince made the whole company watch the match back and kind of gave me a big pat on the shoulder. So for me, it, it was awesome is the word. Like I was... I was so happy. I felt like, okay, I've arrived. And it, it was so much fun. It was a great time for me. Great question. Thank you so much. You know, I try to wrap up these panels by saying, like, what are you looking forward to after this? But I know where you're going, bro. Not to sound like a stalker. But ladies and gentlemen, Shelton Benjamin is coming with us to StarCast in Australia. A round of applause. He's a global oh, yeah. traveler. Are you looking forward to StarCast, and what else are you looking forward to oh, after Manchester? Of, of course, I, as soon as I heard about that, I was like, okay, who's running this? I gotta be a part of this thing. Yeah. And you, like I said, I, I, I've been looking at the guys who've been on it, you know, put it this way, I love Mickey James. If, she, if she's there, I'm there. Same. So, uh, it, I, I'm, I'm like really looking forward, because I also, Australia is one of my favorite places to visit, and yeah, you're really twisting my arm to go spend a week, you know, in Australia, just, you know, hanging out, having fun. I yeah. mean, what a life, right, guys? Like, I don't, I don't want to... That's how I feel. Who wants like... to fly halfway across the world to have a good time yeah. for days on end? For wrestling, yeah. I'm going to pet all the koalas. It's going to be a huge time. I'm honored to be on that tour with you. We're looking forward to it. StarCast in Australia coming up in April. But Shelton Benjamin, we wish you continued success. You're one of my personal favorites. Any final words for your beautiful fans here in Manchester before we let you go? Uh, all I can say is for those who've been a fan, thank you for being fans. Uh, we're not done yet. Uh, I'm still deciding where I'm going to go, where I'm going to land. But until then, I will continue to, to bust my butt to try to entertain the fans, have a good time, and I hope to see all of you here again next year or even sooner. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, a true legend of our sport, please give your Manchester applause to Shelton Benjamin.